This video will demonstrate a comparison of generating design strips between versions 2018 and version 2019. We're going to talk about how to input support lines and also splitters, the differences between those two versions, and really just illustrate the efficiency of being able to generate strips based on the new improvements in version 2019. We're going to go ahead and get started with a single level model. And I'm going to just um, use Floor Pro today. This is going to be done in version 18 first. So we're going to mainly be focusing on some tools here in the strip modeling and also over here in strip results. To begin the process, we're just going to import a CAD file, a DWG file. OK, we'll use this file here. We're going to calibrate the file. And we're working here in US units. I'm going to calibrate based on this marker at the top between these two points is 20, uh, 20 feet. So we'll go ahead and enter that. So this, this is really just building the model. This, the same process would be applicable to really both versions if we're using this imported DWG option. So we're going to transform polygons from the model toolbar, uh, or the model ribbon rather, under the transform panel. I can transform um, the slabs. We'll go ahead here and transform columns. And I can window select these columns if they're isolated in a layer, which can be done using layer settings. That's down here below. But this is easy enough just to pick the columns one by one for a model of this size. So we'll now transform the columns. I'll transform these compound walls or wall groups and then uh, the openings. So that's the, the gist of the model we'll be looking at. I'll go over here to visibility. I'm going to group this and turn off the um, CAD group that we imported. Okay, we're left with a, now a clean model. Now to, to add a little complexity to this model, we have a non-orthogonal layout of columns. So we're going to add uh, an opening. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll just add an opening, let's say here. And we're going to add another opening, maybe over here. Okay, and then we'll also add beams. So I'm going to add one beam along this path, and I'll add another beam along this path. Okay, we want to have the ability to, to design these beams as beam requirements, as beam criteria. So that's an important distinction with how the program handles that between version 18 and between version 2019. So let's let's go ahead and save this. Call this 2018 strips. I'm also going to go ahead and save as um, 2019. We'll say 2019 strips. Okay, and I'll need to go back and just relaunch that 2018 strips. Okay, so now we're going to input strips or support lines as we would do in version 18. Mainly we're going to use, um, because of the non, uh, let's say, asymmetric layout of columns, um, it, they're really all over the place, we're going to use the manual input of strips. This is probably the most efficient versus the support line wizard. Um, I'll go ahead and do this. I'm going to start by snapping here on the slab edge and, you know, just going from column to column or support to support. So we'll go to column and then I'll stop this come back and turn on the snap tool there. A lot of times I'll actually start outside of the slab and then go back and fix my snap points after the fact. Um, but here we'll go from there over to that point. That's a shared point. That's important. We'll talk about that here in a moment. If I want to break this into one individual support line for the beam, I'll stop this one. By default, we're working with two-way slabs. So all of our support lines are two-way slabs right now, and we'll have to go back and reassign the beams to beam criteria. That's that's easy enough to handle. Notice now we have one, two, and three support lines there. Um, here we're going to go and do something like like that. Let me 
me fix that. I need to add another point there. Okay, I'll move this one out and then drag that one back to the column. I'll come back and pick up that beam here in just a moment. And then here we're going to start at the beam. There's one and the next one will be a two span two way slab along that along that wall. OK, so in this example, we're really just going to look at the X direction just to demonstrate. So we're the same types of inputs will be made for the Y direction if it's a two way slab. Now I may want to go back and just pull those tails back with snap perpendicular turned on. I can go back and just trim those back um, to the slab edge and something like that. Now if if here we have no splitters, let's assume the the user wants to split out all of the openings. And even though if a design cut goes through an opening but doesn't exit an opening, technically it's still acceptable. The program will still treat the section properly. So, uh, but for purposes of having a clean generation of strips, we want to also include the ability to to kind of chop out these openings in terms of our tributaries. If I have no splitters and I generate my strips, you can see there's a few a few issues here. Okay, and some of those issues would be like so. We have some overlap right there. We have cuts extending into an opening. We talked about one of our requirements. We wanted to have those out of openings. The same thing right, right here, right there. We have this extending into an opening. And then we have some voids in the slab over here. And then right there, this, this looks like it's also overlapping and we have another void. So. Because of these issues, we're, we're, we, we have to add splitters in order to um, instruct the program on how to treat the tributaries, where to start and stop them, how they interact with each other. And this is something that most users of the software have been able to handle over usage, you know, for several years of, of different um, builds up to version 2019. And it's easy enough to, to add these splitters. So to do this, what we're going to do is I'm going to delete the design strips. One thing I forgot to do was change these to beam design. Okay, we'll change those to beam. Everything else is set to two-way slab. And I'm now going to add X direction splitters. So I need to have a splitter where a, a point let's say terminates at another support line but does not touch the slab edge. This is one point, I'll, I'll add a splitter there and that bounds the edge of this tributary. Um, I'll add another splitter at this location, for example, up to the slab edge or the nearest support line and down to the slab edge or nearest support line. And then it's also important that splitters are snapped on the exact point that's required. So if these splitters are misaligned at any at any degree, let's say, uh, in terms of this support line, then they essentially are not interpreted as they should be, and you have to go back and readjust them. So here we'll have a splitter. This point stops away from the slab edge. We'll add that splitter. And then for openings, we want to bound out these openings, so I'm going to add splitters uh, to do that also. So we might have a splitter that goes from support line to support line. I'm just using the opening points as easily snappable points. And then I'll add another splitter there. If it's if the opening is bound by four splitters, it becomes um, void of having cuts pass through it. So we'll do the same thing here. There's that one, and then over here we're going to add some splitters near this opening to bound this off. And I'll describe kind of why we're adding splitters the way we are with these, with these openings here in just a moment.
Okay, so those are the splitters for the openings. Now, if we look at this right here, we have a, a tributary, we have a support line which the program tries to develop a tributary for. And if it extends this tributary region down, it extends it to the face of the first splitter that it, that it, that it intersects, or it would take half the distance based on this projection or this construction line to the next support line. Well, here, the tributary hits the splitter and it's bound by this edge and this edge or those splitters and this becomes a portion, a segment of the tributary, uh, tributary for, this, for this strip. This is kind of an idealized segment for that strip. If we look at the zone next to it, right here, now the program says, okay, there's a splitter here, there's a chain of splitters there, break this in half, this half belongs to this support line, this half belongs to this one. And systematically we interpret these and develop our tributaries. If we now generate the strips for two th two th version 2018, we have something that looks like this. Now we're missing uh, one important um, thing. We're missing a splitter. Remember, th these this beam was actually broken up into two segments. So we need to go back and add splitters for, for these beams um, even here as well. So let's do that. I'm going to add a splitter there. And then we'll go from there down to the support line. Something like, like that. Regenerate. And now we have our design strips. Now we have some we have some leakage here into this opening, so that requires us to go back and make sure all of the points are snapped properly, uh, which they may not be in this case. But ultimately, we have to go back and fix some areas where splitters may not be doing the job that we that we intend them to do in terms of the the breakout of tributaries. These two are open. We still have a little work to do here and here. We're going to ignore that. I think this shows and illustrates the need for um, quite a few splitters and, and being able to uh, break out support lines with isolation of beams versus two-way slab criteria. Now what we're going to do is open up Builder 2019 and we're going to take a look at uh, this this version. Don't want to install uninstall. I need to run that. Let's go over here. Okay, now we're using Builder 2019, and I'm going to go ahead and launch that file that we had saved for uh, for this version. And that's this file. Now, in the new uh, version, there's a, there's less dependency on the need for splitters, and they're used really in just one way. And so. To lay out the support lines here, I'm not going to use the manual generation. I could. I could still use these two tools, but I'm going to use the dynamic editor. And we'll do X direction. And I'm just going to take a construction line through my um, columns and walls. Here, if we add a point near an end of a beam, the program will automatically break that up into um, its own support line. So here we're just going to do something like this. I'm going to snap near the endpoints of those those walls to, to grab those points. Again, we'll start this one. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to take this out slightly away from the column just so I can start have a start point and a beam point. And then we'll go to wall and then back over here to column. Okay, and that's my support lines. So you can see this was broken out. This is two-way slab. This is actually beam. The program knows it's a beam, so it categorizes it as such. This goes back to two-way slab. The same thing uh, right here. This is beam. The others are two-way slab. I could now just delete this if I don't want that tail at that point. There's a tiny little... Um, tail here on this end. We'll just have to delete that, so I'll delete the vertex here. And in terms of splitters, if I generate the strips now without any splitters, there's no need for splitters in this case 
if we don't care about cuts extending through openings. So if I generate the strips, all of these strips are generated properly without the need of any splitters at the endpoints of support lines that are inside of the slab edge. Those are no longer required. If I want splitters, I can add them for um, openings. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'll use an X direction splitter. In this case, all I need to do is put it along a length that I want the tributary to be bounded from. So I don't want the tributary to extend into this opening, therefore I put a splitter here along that opening edge. On this side, I will put one there, and I'll put one here. I'm also going to put one along um, this line here. Okay, we'll do another one here and there. like so. And that's the input of splitters. So the reason I'm adding them as such is this just provides a boundary. So this will extend down and stop. This will extend up and stop. This will extend between. When you get beyond this edge of the opening, it'll extend down halfway between these two. This will extend up to there and up halfway between these two and so on. So that's the input of splitters. We're done with this input. And this is the outcome of the strip generation. So you can see this has been greatly improved in version 2019. It took us probably a quarter or less of the time needed to get proper strips inside of, of this, this floor for the X direction. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.